Hello and welcome. This is going to be a special broadcast today. I've been guided to pull some cards on the recent development in the U.S. where they've been putting pressure on different high-ranking members of the intelligence and military positions for greater disclosure on the study and information in regards to what used to be known as UFOs, my right ear is ringing, and now apparently the more widely touted acronym is UAP, Unidentified Anomalic something, anomaly something. Anyways, um, so I want to get a few cards on this. So I tried to choose the right decks. I trust that we're going to get what we're going to get. And so I pre-shuffled the Tao and Tao Te Ching, excuse me, Tao Te Ching and Art of War deck. I have that combined here. And I did get a few cards that came out and I was wondering at first if they pertained, but then I saw the this one here. So it says, embracing change. Change is inevitable, but many are scared of it. Major life events, leaving home, quitting a job, splitting up with a partner, marriage or divorce are stressful. Prepare for the worst. But taking the right risks at the right time will ensure that you get through it. The best way to prepare for change is to be the one driving it. So, of course, in, in this, we're talking about some real 3D, predictable, back and forth information here. Um, but embracing change with this reading is clear some things could be quite stressful for the common people and so the powers that be has opted to keep certain information quiet um and although my critical mind says well why wouldn't we believe that life exists someplace else maybe not life as we know it on our planet because life on our planet developed because of the conditions here if we wanted to search for awareness in other places, I think that we need to open our minds and um, to understand what type of so-called creatures or beings might develop from whatever we could conceive of. You know, we look at TV and they'll often make them into these beings, uh, but sometimes there'll be things such as like, you know, way back in the day, any Alfred Hitchcock fans in the house, uh, was it called Swamp Thing or something? It's like the swamp was like this nasty glob and it was actually the monster. Um, there's all kinds of different ways that this could present without our mind being kind of prepared for that. And some people have a hard enough time choosing what to eat for breakfast, <laughs> let alone um, how to operate in a world where things can change that dramatically overnight. So even if they do bring out a lot of information, there is going to be way more unknowns than knowns for some time, I believe, until people can handle it. But we'll see. Sun Tzu said, If in the midst of difficulties we are always ready to seize an advantage, then we may extricate ourselves from misfortune. So there's something here about our timing and the way that we can actually keep ourselves safe and having the upper ground here. So under the deck here, we have number 33. Knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. If you realize that you have enough, you are truly rich. 
if you stay in the center and embrace death with your whole heart, you will endure forever. So here death is mostly speaking about, I believe, the ego death of like all of the people who have pleasantly um, made fun of different people in conversation like, oh, ho, ho, ha, ha, the tinfoil hat person over there. Like I'm not triggered by this because I haven't gotten this too much. But when I did go through my first awakening um, to, I went on a bender for a while with corruption and conspiracy theories and poison in the food stuff more than a decade ago. Um, and before that, I already was aware of quite a bit, but nobody really wanted to have that conversation because I come from a small town. And so then I recognized that I had to expand the pool that I was swimming in if I wanted to get new information, if I wanted to have the conversations and get the knowledge that I needed, I needed to extend myself and bring in new information, new sources, new uh, mentors, new guides perhaps. So making this intention known to your guides that you are ready to be shown, um, to be peaceful in this way. Um, but also it does kind of suggest that we should not be, I saw this one horror show a long time ago and everybody raced up to the rooftops and they're like, hello, aliens, come on down. And all of a sudden the aliens start just blasting them here and laugh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it was just, it was made to be shown as ridiculous, you know, because there is equal opportunity that we will most likely in any type of established order that we might find, we could often find both peaceful and aggressive life forms within anything, any one thing probably has its own extremes in demeanor and so on. So let me just keep reading here. So did we read this whole thing? Yeah, if you realize that you already have enough, you're truly rich. And if you stay in the center and embrace death with your whole heart, you can endure forever. And so this too is like telling us to take stand when uh, something about taking a stand when it's necessary and only when it's necessary, but being willing to die for something such as like our children, you know, if somebody was coming at me, um, I would defend in a certain way, but if somebody was coming at my kids, I've often thought about, you know, to date myself, it's kind of like I pity the fool that would come after my babies, you know, and I will say, um, I'm sad to, to bring this in, but we did have a predator attack. Some of our, um, our youngest babies in our, in our chicken flock and Hawk has always been since my awakening part of my totem. And now I am faced with the need to not only outgrow that totem, but to somehow respect its uh, magic and um, divinity while honoring that part of that means that it has the right to feed itself, but also that my responsibility is to my babies that are being held in these cages and to keep them safe. Or, you know, I, I like to have them out, to have them free ranging. And it's challenging to me to believe that sometimes a cage is a form of protection. So if we want to embrace death with our whole heart, then we open the cages. And, you know, for those who choose to be protected, um, they will also you know, so, okay, let's get in here. We have reclaim your energy coming out. 
This one is beautiful because she puts that lotus, thro uh, lotus I almost said throne, the lotus headpiece crown upon her head. Reclaiming our energy here with the multi arms here saying that our power or our capacity here is otherworldly. Uh, let's get some of the information. I'm curious about the types of life forms, the types of upgrades. I think from this deck we can get some information about what's coming in for us. We've already gotten a lot of blueprints, rewriting, realm bridgers. First we have 12, water, the overflow. I'm seeing Lemurians here. Some kind of ace of cups. Also could be uh, I'm seeing solar plexus chakra. What is that one? Andromedans. Andromedans are coming through. Should have studied up on my otherworldly being rhetoric before coming live, but I wanted this to be more spontaneous. I just saw 11.11 when I looked up. So there's an overflow of information from multi-sources, again with the multi-hand goddess. The other one was six hands, I believe, and now we have eight hands here. Underneath we have gracious receptivity. Some of us have been channeling divine energy for some time, and others have been and haven't realized it, and still others have preferred to remain sleeping and to block out their intuitive capacity to plug into that channel, to tune their frequency in on that dial. But here we're being asked to surrender if you dare, to embrace full disclosure, um, will turn us on our heads. Ooh, Mount Shasta coming through here as one of the epicenters of communication between realms. Ooh, I'm getting a, an intuitive hit. Again, this is for entertainment purposes only. I don't know anything more than any of you all. How, oh, and Realm Bridger comes out with that. I think that some of the things that I've seen and heard and encountered, experienced in my studies over time has been that there have been different things such as like crop circles and the like that have been seen as supernatural influencers trying to bring us into this slowly and cautiously to communicate. And for that reason, it's been so important for the powers that be across the globe to know what they're dealing with. And so I do believe that they've been trying to communicate with different beingness uh, in the universe. And I, I do believe that we're going to be shown that they've already charted some various uh, of these, what are they, UAPs, um, and how they not only do these uh, weird, out of expected moves like sudden turns, sudden stalls, turns, twists, and bends in their flight patterns and moving at the sound and speed of light. It's like they are, it seems like the fastest way from point A to point B is a straight line, but you will sometimes see them kind of like doing their own little dun, 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 dun. It's like all things being vibration, all waves and potentialities. It's like the double slit experience an experiment. And um, so they've witnessed these things already going in and out of the ocean through the face of the sun, if accountings can be said to be correct. Um, not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, just somebody who's tapping into some energies because the information has been well documented by high achieving, high ranking, high regarded, highly respected individuals in highly um, silenced roles, high military things, pilots and so on. And then the stigma of coming forward has been such that um, it has been made 
into a culture of ridiculing those that would that would see it and so it's been um kept in the silence in that way because it's kept certain individuals from allowing themselves to become curious allowing themselves to seem uh, a little um impressionable or naive when in all accounts we can see that people don't honestly come forward to be defamed and discredited when they're a high ranking individual because they believe in a conspiracy. They do it because they saw something with their own eyes. And so here we have these realm bridgers. I feel like these are some energies, beings, entities stepping forward, doing things such as crop circles, or, you know, we talked about this a few months ago when I was sitting out back and speaking with the trees came up in this context and the idea that this realm is sometimes seen to be made up of almost like these bars, like um, bars talking about cages, correct? And how you can sometimes see the way that the, the um, apologies for my nails, uh, the way that the, the uprights and the sideways bars weave together and seeing how almost like sometimes you can see transparently, translucently through that in your day to day. And every once in a while, you might see a dark shadow or like a ripple effect going across like the gases as though there's like this pond around us, something that kind of pushes or disrupts perhaps perhaps the um, our perception of the environment here as something brushes against our experience with our extended aura here. There's these anomalies moving through time and space all around us at all times. Again, I do believe that even here on this physical plane that we will be surprised to find that we have already been coexisting with anomalies such as waveforms that are um, coming and going at all times in equal mutual reception between the planets and ourselves. That's what the study of astrology is sort of like and um, in a way so to speak. Um, don't take anything I say too critically. Um, we're here to to look into some some things. Yeah, there's new blueprints on the bottom of the deck here. Exactly. So below that, we've got She of the Lotus with Gracious Receptivity. Exactly. Yes, She of the Lotus is awakening here. I do believe the, the um, our potential to be mediums, channels, and intuitive beings here in our body is being awakened to the electricity in the electromagnetic mutual receptivity with the gracious up up leveling of the heart space. All that's happening in tandem here to kind of push us into the point of surrendering the dramas and narratives in order to band together for some type of uh, grand awakening here where our wisdom is going to be unleashed. The glass ceiling that has been keeping us within our physicality is going to be shattered into new realms and dimensions where if we are finally aware of our cosmic heritage and our interconnectivity here, then um, it's like when my generation was growing up, this keeps coming up, the analog to the digital age and then to the ethernet age and so on, to the crystalline age. The new blueprints that came in when I was growing up was the shift between typewriters onto the first computers those dot matrix type of 
printers and then to the laser printers and then to the internet dial-up and then fast onto satellite interconnectivity to Wi-Fi and so on. Wi-Fi is the, the microcosm macrocosmic harmonic that tells us about quantum anomaly within all things that are here and if we believe in Wi-Fi, why is it so far-fetched for us to believe in the psychic quantum entanglement and to trust and believe in our own psychic anomalies coming forward here, to believe that we are always exchanging information with those individuals and beings and the environment at large here. There's a, a huge tower breakthrough of emotional release coming. I'm getting tingles up my back. Possibly, yeah, this transformation with the butterfly there. You are one of the individuals. Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, full circle. I just recognized before I was even somebody who knew how to read any of the energies, I was interested and I first went in for one of my very first readings and I was told at that time due to one of my placements I think it was Uranus in the second house of my chart in Scorpio and now here we had the full moon that was up in Taurus opposite Scorpio conjunct Uranus and that message that was delivered to me at that time which I was about to tell you was a story for your experience now we are the forerunners of this disclosure process and able to help and introduce slowly the, the minds and hearts of those around us. So if you've been talking about this for over a decade, um, yeah, there's uh, much more that we're all going to be shown and some things are going to be shown to be ludicrous and frauds where other things are going to blow our hair back in powerful ways, but we are here to be some type of a conduit here between the uh, so-called other beings, the other realms, the multiverse, and this realm. Interesting. So here we have healing. I'm going to put that up here. And in the middle, yes, this gracious receptivity can re remain there. Let's go ahead and keep moving on. Oh, I saw 22-22 there. Uh, yeah, surfacing was on the bottom of the deck. And so there's new information surfacing. Um, obviously, let's get some more information. What can you tell us about this development? Yes, yeah, so birthing. Something is coming in, a new way of thinking or feeling, flowing, a new age. There's something definitely about the divine feminine during this time needing to be activated in order for um, the hearts and minds of so-called man to be ready for this. Here we have recognition coming through with that plexus energy, recognition of the feminine and how the feminine is bringing in this incredible shift into the higher heart space so that we are not going to be like, there's other alien movies where they'll see um, the very nice aliens come in, but then the shoot first ask questions later, or they might be bad, but you know, the, bat, the worst thing to do is to take aim and fire at, an, at a shadow. We don't know what that shadow is and what its capacity is. And so, um, yeah, we need to be ready. We need to recognize that our capacity to defend ourselves is, I believe, critically entangled with the high heart in our ability to be a peaceful race or not. Are we a threat or are we actually um, a value add to the next phase? 
And so we're being asked to upgrade. We're being told we're at the point of critical mass of needing to push ourselves over the threshold and, and um, bridge the realms here with psychic interconnectivity, with graciousness and trust, radical trust that we are guarded, protected, and um, that if we were not thought of as precious to most of this new coming phase, then we would have already been gone a long time ago because we're highly vulnerable as people. And so we need to recognize also that that in itself is a good reason to trust and to keep our hearts and minds open at this time. Oof, up. This is a huge leveling up. Oh, yes. I'm seeing this is huge for the ascension journey for folks. Shift is still under here. Get a couple more out of this deck. I wanted to get a few out of the Dreams of Gaia deck, too. Um, I was hoping for some more precise information about what we can expect in the coming phase and what we need to know as we move forward. Okay, we've got, there may be a storm warning coming in. We need to be careful to manifest through the power, wisdom of the heart and the awareness and the information, the way that we harmonically inform ourselves and others and the way that we exchange energies with all that is, because the the others are already attuned and aware to our heart space and our vibrational capacity. They have already, many of them, already mastered telepathy. And so it's like that imagery that keeps stepping forward with the never ending story where the hero has to walk through this portal where these, these big sphinx things that have their these statues have their eyes closed, but then if you let fear and doubt and anxiety creep in, then, you know, your heart becomes untrue and unpure. And then um, they may choose to respond in such a way. And I don't mean that out of fear. Um, please don't use that as an awareness of the fear creeping in, but it's like, through the storms, we need to be the I at the center of the storm, the I am concept, that I am also God's and I am also entangled with the multiverse. I am also entangled with anything that I might discover. And if it is a part of me, then, you know, the clarity and truth and wisdom of the chakra centers begins to uplift and expand our aura in such a way that we become automatically, incidentally, sort of congruent, coherent to the anomalies, and we start to understand and witness and see them with our own eyes here. So this is going to take some commitment on our behalves to, to get any type of insight or information really brought down the lines, but I think we need to be gentle and uh, also to help other individuals to prepare and be ready for this. Yes, to change the, the minds. This is that shift with the high heart. Do you see the color pattern evidencing again with that lime green energy? Um, clashing perspectives, the butterfly, the X in the middle, the commitment and the contract, the soul contract. Yes, Realm Bridger. The to change the minds of the masses, to bring unity consciousness in, to shift the critical mass from fear consciousness into love consciousness and awareness, into the telepathy and the unburdening of the heart chakra, to the unburdening of the mind through the unlearning and um, true wisdom development set, uh, type of processing alchemy and awareness and awakening that's going on this leveling up the ascension process itself we are in critical crazy times folks so then we have power again 
recognizing our power is how that's coming through amongst the storm. We are storm gifted star seed here on the table. We are gifted star seeds to see our power through the storms of life, to um, witness that we are sometimes possibly the aliens we've been waiting for even. That just makes me want to giggle. But I think that somewhat it's true. It's like, I don't know if I believe in aliens. And then all of a sudden we recognize that we're actually part of our genetic heritage is that. Um, for the disbelievers, just see your way out if that offends you. But I think for those that get it, we get it. It's the multiverse speaking through. And it's a high level of integrity to witness our wisdom and to accept the soul contract to sign on the dotted line of these new blueprints that are coming in, helping us to awaken and hold the hands of the masses through this while we gain the ability to set everything that is, the hearts and minds and the souls of the beings here, all beings, all of my relations, cosmic and otherwise, into the correct and proper order of the high heart space at the center. The high heart at the center, yes. And we are getting divine intervention and assistance here with these cards coming last here. Divine assistance is here. And perhaps the aliens have always been the gods that we've been waiting for as well. But we too are sacred and gods. So let's see if we can get anything else. We're at the last few minutes. Um, ground yourself. Plant your seeds on every level that you can because we are helping our, our kin and our children to um, get to know how to, how to read the code, the sacred code of the internet, of the, of the new age, the new blueprints that are coming in. It's like we're no longer going to need to build with brick and mortar, but to align with the divine portal at the center of the pyramid, right? All right got a few more coming out. Yes, you are the adept, the sorcerer that's been reading the codes. You've been reading the sacred blueprints. And here you are also connected deeply with your empress-like status, deeply connected to the earth. And um, yeah, working with the elementals. And she has some objects levitating above her hand. Perhaps part of your meditation practice in the coming phase may be doing something like working on levitation, working on moving things with the power of the telekinesis of the mind or claircognizance or even your own ability to perhaps make someone call you or your ability to do any of those things, to be a quantum healer to, um, oh, there are so much, so much more to be somebody who can believe in your telepathy and in your channel. Look at that. Beautiful. The two Phoenix energies, the yellow and the red. There's something very deep in the pit of the sacral chakra that is working out some kinks, so to speak, between the root and between our belongingness and our true capacity to believe in ourselves. Do I exist? Yes, I exist. I am that I am. And here is the aquatic. What is this Aquaman coming up in his UAP? Um, we've got this dark and light, some folks that have been coming out of hiding like I already knew. And here we have, oof, 